as Calvary and not just as Calvary, but most Calvary's right. Pastor yep. Jack Hibbs, mm-hmm. Pastor Chuck Smith, they're all pre-trib, pre-mill. So basically what that means is we'll kind of give the divine outline. Like my dad, do you want to give the, yeah. with Revelation? The divine outlines found in Revelation one nineteen, And that is, it says, Revelation one nineteen. it says, the things you have seen. And that's chapter one, the glorified Christ, which is really cool because I love this. People, you know, some people say you can never, uh, I don't say slain the spirit, but go out. But it's pretty neat how John used to snuggle with Jesus on earth. He sees (laughs) Jesus glorified. He falls like a dead man. So that's the glorified Christ, the resurrected Christ. And then chapters two and three, uh, the things that are. And that's the things, that's the church. That's the church age is the different periods of church age in history. And then you have the things that will happen after this, metatauta, things that happen after this. And that's chapters four and five. I'm sorry, after this, you have the rapture, chapters four and five. Then you have six through 19, which is tribulation period. Then you have chapter 20, which is the millennial kingdom and the new heaven and new earth. And if you really want to simplify it, the things that are, or think, says the things you've seen, that's the glorified Christ, chapter one. The things that are, that's chapters two and three. And really the things will happen after this is really chapters four through 22 and to make it simplify, but we kind of broke it a little more. And I'll just give you guys the outline again, cause it can be kind of confusing, but, um, the thing is the, the first coming of Jesus, right? When he came on earth, right? As a baby. And then there's the day of Christ, which right, that's the rapture. Mm-hmm. That's where we're going to talk about that, what that means. Cause people are like the word rapture is in the Bible. We're going to talk about that. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that next. Um, and then there's the second coming, um, it's is the day, the of, day the of the Lord, which is like the beginning. It's like the tribulation, the beginning of the tribulation. um, the beginning of the tribulation and then to the end of the millennium, to the end of millennium. but to make it also, so there's a seven year. So we believe there's going to be the rapture where the church is taking up and then there's a seven year tribulation. And then that's when at the end of that, that's right. That's the second coming. Cause people get confused yeah, with the rapture with him. and the yeah. second coming. And that's when yeah. we come back with him and then we rule and reign with him for a thousand years, mm-hmm. which is the thousand year reign. Yeah. It talks about some people are like, Oh, I don't believe it's a, literal thousand years and those are people i think are all millennial but um we believe it's what the bible says that's an actual thousand years but um the reason for it people say when the literal sense makes sense Mm -hmm. seek no other sense so that's the thing we're not saying we're right because i know i get what some people say is like oh but sometimes they say like a thousand years is like a day whatever it doesn't matter all we know is that it does talk about how god does need to rule though because i jack hibbs was talking about it is because we need to see a righteous government yeah. which is god well, so well, god's going to rule instead of like these politicians nowadays. well that's what we were praying when we pray the lord's prayer right. we say kingdom your come. kingdom come your will be done on earth now we're also i pray it for me daily right lord i want your will to be done in my life but is it done perfectly in my life? Mm-hmm. No, no one's life is perfectly done his will. Now, hopefully the majority of our life is God's will, but we're longing for that day, right? Cause he first came the first time, first coming, he came as a suffering servant to die in our place. Mm-hmm. But when he comes back again, the Bible says he will rule the earth with a rod of iron. And we long for that when he will be the conquering King, he will be the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, and we will rule and reign with him. So we're raptured. We believe we spend seven-year honeymoon with Jesus. Then at the end of the, of not the millennial kingdom, but the end of the tribulation, mm-hmm. That's we come back. Coming. We rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And why we will rule and reign with him because we will be perfected. And so the people, who, the tribulational saints, those who made it through the tribulation, then those who got saved, they will have our nature. They'll have a, a, the spirit and a sinful nature. So we will rule and reign in righteousness with Christ. Christ mm-hmm. will rule from Jerusalem on the throne of David. And then we will, you know, I've got Maui, so I'm going to be ruling and reigning in no. Maui. Just <laughs> kidding. But uh, I always joke with that. People joke there's no sea, but anyway. No. I, I, anyway. So, but th- we're going to be ruling and reigning because, and, and then justice will be instant. There won't be like, tw- you know, three-year court, dates to see if a murderer should get tried everything will be instant and it'll be done righteously so yep and then satan will be Um, and all of this right here that we're talking about the thousand years is in chapter 20 of revelation so you guys can read that and the whole thing with all this too is we really want you guys to study out on your own too but we want to give you tools and stuff because we're not saying oh there's only one right way and it's our way but 
like I like this one guy he was saying he's like you have the right to be wrong but he's like but the main thing with it is it's not anything to argue about that's all yeah. I'm saying it's not anything that we can unless you deny that he's coming back exactly because I love how Jack Hibbs says it either rupture so any of us can die right I think all of us understand that like oh we could die but rapture we can be taken up and the crazy thing is we're gonna get into this later but for those who have heard the gospel and rejected it you can't just be like, oh, the rapture happens and I'll be able to like accept Christ there. No, it says in second, is it that second Thessalonians 2? Yeah, second that there you'll be given into a delusion. So don't be think today is the day of salvation. Amen. That's why the Bible says that because yeah. we don't know. It says we don't know the day or the hour because some people also another thing people are trying to predict like what day it is it and stuff. And Jack Hibbs, he was also saying like, why do people keep doing it? It's not going to happen on that day yeah. now because you said yeah, that. Exactly. But we can uh, see uh, the signs of like when uh, it's about to, but not the day or the hour. No one can predict that. But I was like, this is that people need to study. We need to not be afraid of this. But listen. Don't find a lot of your information on the internet on YouTube because mm -hmm. that's where there's a lot of craziness. I mean, I'm on YouTube, so you know there's a lot of craziness. But okay. go to church. Yeah. But go to church and church. go to a Bible believing church and go to mainstream because we're getting all these hybrids yeah. that are crazy. I mean, we're getting these crazy guys that aren't pastors just saying this stuff, and we need to really be discriminatory. I love what Bob Dylan said when he did his Christian stent. He said, I don't want to have to learn something I got to unlearn. So if I don't know know the person's name and I don't know about him and I don't have someone who tells who I trust tell me oh this is a good teacher I don't take it in because I don't you know and a lot of people aren't biblically biblically literate to where they can kind of go ooh, that's not right and people just gulp down and that's why though I believe you know the internet's good in some ways but it's really bad in some ways have gotten all these strange strange mm -hmm. end times belief you know and now what's really weird wild to me is being a Christian for 40 years now everyone's saying we're going through the tribulation Mm -hmm. Why would you want to go through the tribulation? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you just get to pick you don't want to, but I believe the Bible teaches that, and we can show you many scriptures. Yeah, well, but yet it seems like we're just sort of going, oh, you know, because the world's going crazy, but... It's not the you know, wrath but of God. God yeah, yeah, the difference is, I'm just going to say this, maybe I'll skip ahead. People say, but Craig, why do you think you as a Christian escape pain and suffering? I don't believe that. But I say the problem of us going through the tribulation even the front end, the three and a half years, is because this is God, as it says in the end of Revelation uh, 6, 17, I believe. It says God is going to pour out his wrath on a Christ-rejecting mm -hmm. world. And God said he's not appointed us to wrath. He First says Thessalonians in 5, 5, 9. So God took our wrath that we deserve, all of us, on the cross. So why would God pour out his wrath on me as a Christian? You see what I mean? And it's not because I'm worthy, but because of Jesus took my wrath, took our wrath. Those of us in Christ, we're not going to experience the wrath of God. So what Christians like in China, Christians in Iran, Afghanistan, they're experiencing the wrath of Satan. But this in the tribulation period is going to be the wrath of Satan and the wrath of the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. So that's why we believe, one of the main reasons we believe biblically why we're not going to go through the tribulation. But First Thessalonians 4.13 says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. So mm -hmm. we need, that's why, again, that's just another verse for, this is why we're informing you. But also, I encourage you guys to read the book of Daniel, to read Revelation, to read First and Second Thessalonians, to read Joel, like all these books are preparing us and like telling us what's going to come. So I just think it's, it's really beautiful. But, um, so the first question is rapture isn't in the Bible. So why do you guys keep saying it? So, okay, I'm going to bring, so I did Latin for like six years <laughs> in school. Um, I still don't really know it. I probably know Latin more than Spanish actually, but, um, so there's rapi more, which is the Latin for rapture. So that is where we find that is in first Thessalonians four seventeen. It says, after that, we who are alive and remain will be caught up. So that's the word for rapi more or harpazo. Um, so that well, rapi, caught up. Rapi more, 
Oh, Rapi yeah, Mori that Rapi is, is Latin. Latin. Is yeah. Latin. And then Hapazo is Greek. Hapazo is Greek. And what that means is caught up. It means to be snatched away. Mm-hmm. It means like if your little kid was running out into traffic, you would grab them by the shirt and yank them back. So it's God is going to yank us out of this world because why? It's going to get to the place where cr- we can't be salt and light. The mm-hmm. world's going to go so crazy. And I heard a really interesting, can I say this? is going to be a little off topic, but to show how crazy the world's going to be when God raptures us is in the first three and a half years, there'll be the two witnesses. Now people argue it'll be, uh, it's going to be uh, um, uh, um, Elijah, uh, Elijah Moses, and Moses or Enoch. Or Enoch. But there'll be two witnesses. But they're going to kill the two witnesses. And this is a time of peace, right? The Antichrist yep. false peace. But they're going to kill the two witnesses. They're going to leave them dead there for what, three days? I mean, Straight, crazy. they're going to yeah. leave them dead. So that's really peaceful, loving people. <laughs> and what are they going to do? It says they're going to give gifts to each other. Hmm. So that's going to be peaceful, loving time. So their their definition of peace, they got to be so nice. They mm-hmm. leave dead people in the street, just and they're like ha ha ha, and they're just going to be. That's so crazy. It's going to be. Yep. I mean, that's nuts. So. Anyway. Mm-hmm. And so again, saying so, we get the word rapture from that when it talks about being caught up, and so it's from the word the Latin rapi more, or I've also heard rapturo, or just rapi, different things. Ra- yeah, it depends who it is. I, I yeah, love it. So rapi many- more. So mm-hmm. what's up? Wrap in. What's up? Yeah. And then the other, the Greek is harpazo. So yeah. being caught up. And then so also. That, so know this. We also don't have the word Trinity in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we believe in the Trinity. Or the word Bible so, in the Bible. So, yeah. So, but, but that's where we get. So the ra- rapture isn't just a made up word. Like, like someone just said, some gringo pastor said, Hey, let's call it the rapture. It is rapi amor from the Latin where we get the word rapture. So caught up when you say that we are alive, we remain, we'll be caught up together in the clouds. We're going to meet Jesus in the clouds. That's the, that's the rapture to meet the Lord in the air. That's where we get the word rapture. And there's a lot of words we have that are not in the Bible, but come from the Latin. Yeah. So then other people, I know a lot of people put this down, but, um, the church was mentioned in chapters two and three in revelation two and three but then after that so after 17 times right? in i think so yeah but after that um in revelation four it through until um is it 19 when we come back yeah, with christ not- um four through i think it's four through 19 yeah. Um, I don't have my notes. I have on my computer, but I forgot my notebook. Yeah. But um, after that, so Revelation 4, it's 4 1. It says, but we're after not called this, the church, then we just come back. What? We don't, we're not called the church because this is the church. Yeah, age. yeah. It, so the church age back. isn't mentioned yeah. again after that. Yeah, that's so the la- last why, time is chapter 4. Yeah, so then when you start seeing the tribulation and all that stuff and the wrath of the Lamb, which is the wrath of God, um, were not mentioned the church. So, and why they see that that happened was in Revelation 4.1. It says, after this, I look, this is John speaking, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you must what must take place after this. So a lot of people are saying, oh, that's just John being taken up to be seen, to be able to see this stuff. Mm-hmm. But when it talks about, being taken up again, that is the caught up and saying like snatched out, taken away. So I think that I know a lot of people have their weird things with it, but the thing that I really think is that makes the most sense of it is the church ages mentioned in two and three. And after it says the caught up, you don't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you also see in stories like with Noah or lot, um, I encourage you guys to watch. Uh, we've had him on in the past, uh, Pastor James Cadiz. He does a lot of Bible prophecy um, with Don Stewart, right? Don Stewart. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool because he explained this to us. Like it talks about, um, I think it also says like in the days of Noah, um, but people will be like eating and drinking and all that stuff. Um, I think that, he was explaining too. He's like, when you're in the tribulation, you're not going to be having weddings and marriages and Mm -hmm. eating and drinking. He's like, there's going to be hailstones. There's going to be sea life dead. There's going to be just all this, these things where you're not going to be eating and drinking and having weddings and things like that. You're going to be having funerals constantly. So 
Um, I think it was also cool because he was saying that when you see that with Lot, when you see that with Noah, before God is pouring out his wrath, he takes his people out. Right. And I get, okay. Maybe some people are saying, yeah, but I think we'll go through part of it. Right. Some people are mid trip, but we won't. Um, what did they say? Oh, but we'll be like in a little bubble or something or above. Mm. But if you want to believe that you can, it's nothing to argue about. If you yeah. feel like God, that's okay. But it just makes it very clear when you keep seeing like the caught up or taken out when it talks about in the Bible. And the Bible says pray, you know, the other thing. They oh, say, and then also it talks about us then being in the, the marriage feast, right? Yeah. During that time. Yeah. I forgot where that is. It also is. tells us to pray that we might be counted worthy. We're going to see Amen. in a second. But I it's like when that. Jesus tells you to pray that you may be counted worthy to escape. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I like to escape pain if I can. Right? I don't like unnecessary pain. You know, I guess when weightlifting, no pain, no gain, maybe that pain, but not pain of getting shot or tortured. And and, and I want to read. Can I read the thing? I want to read what we, we quoted. But, I want, but listen to this. This is what's going to happen in chapter 6. This is chapter, Revelation chapter 6, verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, so everyone, every slave, every free man, hid themselves, as during the tribulation, hid themselves in caves and in the rocks, so they're not going to be, there it is, no marriage, hid themselves in the rocks and the mountains, verse 16, and said to the mountains rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, that's God, and from the wrath of the Lamb, Verse 17, for the great day of his wrath, there it is again, wrath of God, this isn't Satan, the great day of his wrath shall, has come, and who is able to stand? So this is why, because of First Thessalonians 5, 9, that says God has not appointed us to wrath, but to salvation through Jesus Christ. That's why we believe that we're not going to go through it. And we also say like Lot, when it mm -hmm. says, oh, it's at Genesis, I forget, Genesis 13, when it was Lot, oh, yeah. but where he says, remember, the angel of the Lord, a lot of people believe it's Christ, came to Abraham and said, hey, you, you, I'm going to destroy uh, Sodom. And then Lot, or Abraham goes, oh, my goodness, my, my nephew Lot's there. What am I going to do? So then he kind of sheepishly appeals to God. So would you destroy Sodom if there was 50 righteous men? Well, then he goes from 50 righteous men all the way down to 10. And God says, no, I would not destroy Sodom, even though it's a terrible place, kind of like America, but even a little worse, right? Remember, men came to 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 um, Lot's house and said, "Let us sleep with these angels. Let us sleep with these men, and we want to have sex with them." And uh, and here's Lot, where I don't even really think he's that godly, because he said, "Here, take my virgin daughters." But yet, what happened? God protected him. God, the angels took them, took them out of Sodom. Then it was destroyed with fire and brimstone. And so you see that where even a guy who I could technically say isn't the most godly person I've ever seen, and yet he's in the Hall of Faith, though, in Hebrews 11, but you see God spared him, mm -hmm. amen? And so we need to see that God, if God spared people in the Old Testament before Jesus had paid the price for all our sins, how much more will God spare mm -hmm. us, especially from his wrath? Yeah. So someone also said Enoch was the first man that started um Maranatha, right? Which means Lord come quickly. Enoch was a man that was so intimate with the Lord, right? I love Morgan kind of said that, or I think it might have been he quoted it from Pastor John Corson. He said Enoch was probably just like walking with God and so close with him that God's like, hey, come to dinner. You want to come? Yeah, come to dinner with me. And then he he took him with him. So that should be us. We should be on a mission to be saving, not saving, we can't save anyone, but leading others to Christ. And I love it because this is also what Ray Comfort says. He says, if you're just saying to people, like if you're on a plane, right, that you guys, I'm not going to go into it, but the plane thing with the parachute, and if you're telling them, oh, it's going to be, um, like nothing's going to happen, it's going to be comfortable, but then they put the parachute on, they're like, oh, it's not comfortable, it's not easy. But then if you warn them, like, hey, this plane is going down in five minutes, so put the parachute on, then they're going to put it on. But if we're just acting like, right, like it says, like in the days of no, oh, eat, drink, be married, like go, and not prepared, because what did Noah do? Noah warned the people. Mm. He gave them the time. chance. They told them. And so this is going to lead into our next question about um, for those who are saying what is going to happen to the people who know the gospel mm. but don't accept it now. So that's the thing is the the people in the times of Noah, they were warned. Noah warned them, but why? They were crazy. The same thing that people say about us. Oh, you're crazy. God said he, he said that so many times back when like Peter and Paul and the disciples, they were saying God was going to come back in their times, right? It says that people it's are like going to be saying that. Three. Where is it? 
Second Peter. Second Peter three, where it talks about oh. He's going to come back. People are going to be talking that way. But for us, we want to be like the virgins, right, who are ready. They had their lamp, the oil, and everything, not the ones that are like, oh, he's not coming back. We don't know. We always need to be prepared, not just for death, but for God to take us home. And so it doesn't matter. You're really, your eschatology or stuff, like this stuff is exciting, and we think it is pretty clear how it gives the outline and stuff. But like my dad said, you just have to be ready that he come back in the twinkle of an eye, like a thief in the night says, right? You're not ready Mm -hmm. to, you're like, you don't know when a thief's coming. And so I think that also, it just really helps us to be able to, my dad's giving me emotions. It helps us to be able to not just be watching, but also praying. And it also talks about those who have this hope in them, like will keep themselves pure for John three, three. So yeah. Well, it, I, I want to say, cause you just really, you inspire me, <laughs> but I want to say it was a cool, I was just talking with someone. How many of there's a lot of carnal Christians out there? Yeah. There's a lot of people that say they're Christian that aren't living for God. They're sleeping with their boyfriend. They're doing drugs or doing crazy stuff. Well, I was just talking to someone a couple of weeks ago that was saying, I was basically telling them, and I'm kind of known as kind of someone who's a little, I don't know, kind of hard on people sometimes. But I'm hard because I want to speak the truth because the Amen. Bible says the verse I live by is Ezekiel 33, 3, where it says, I'm paraphrasing, but it basically says, if you see the enemy coming as the watchman on the wall and you not warn the people, their blood is upon your head. But if you warn the people and they don't take heed, their blood is upon their own head. So I don't want anyone telling me as a pastor, Pastor Craig, why don't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me that Jesus is the only way? Why didn't you tell me that I sh- that fornicators should not inherit the kingdom of God, that homosexuals, practicing homosexuals should not, adulterers, fornicators, drunkards? Why didn't you tell me what it says in 1 Corinthians 6? So I tell people the hard things because, right, better are the kisses of a, f- or better are the wounds of a friend than mm-hmm. the kisses of the enemy. And so I tell them this, but this person on their own, this person's a walking with the Lord, was coming to our church, but then left. And this person on their own says, Craig, and this is so funny because they're kind of afraid, right? All on their own. Craig, are, are we going through the tribulation? And I go, well, I'm not, but <laughs> you might know. No, I just said, well, it, it's funny. Why would they ask that? Because they're afraid. They're afraid like things are going crazy now. I need to get right with God. And so they, and then they go, isn't there a scripture that kind of infers that if you're playing games with God, there's a good chance you could be deceived in the last days. You could be deceived uh, and that you could go through the tribulation and be deceived and hear this. Um, you know, how many, know? Oh, I'm thankful for the left behind series that really inspired people to, you know, uh, believe in end times things. It probably led a lot of people to Christ, but there was one of the movies. I don't remember which one, but if you remember, it was when the black pastor and all the people were left behind and they went to the church and they went, Oh my goodness. And now they, now they know it's real and they're turning back to God. But Pastor John Corson shared this verse. I read this like 10, 15 years ago, and I thought, oh, my goodness. Here's the verse. Listen to this verse. This is from uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. Mm-hmm. And it says, talking about the Antichrist at first, it says, the coming of the lawless ones, the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders um, and, with, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Why? Here it is. Because they did not receive the love of the truth. So how many people are in church that aren't really submitting to the truth, aren't really receiving the love of the truth? They just say, oh, yeah, Jesus is just all right with me, that they might be saved. And for this, so they're hearing the truth, but they're just not receiving it, that they might be saved. Verse 11, and for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion. Why? Because they didn't love the truth. So it's talking about people that know the truth. It isn't talking about pagans that don't hear the word of God. So God, hear that, God will send them, not Satan. For this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. What's the lie? That the Antichrist is good. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in righteousness. So like what Mariah said, today's the day of salvation. Today's the day to get right with God. Now you don't, you don't have a guarantee that there's a tomorrow. You don't have a guarantee. They're thinking, oh, I'm just going to sleep with my girlfriend. I'm going to party like a rock star, and then I'll give my life to Jesus, especially if it gets crazy and I see everyone raptured. There's a good chance this verse infers that you will be deceived, that God will hand you over to that strong delusion because why? You took pleasure in unrighteousness. You, when you had the chance to hear the truth, you did not respond to the truth. So that's why I am kind of a jerk and I exhort people, hey, live for God. Don't put it off. Today's the day. And people go, don't scare me. But how many know, as we said, Revelation, the book of Revelation is not to scare us, 
yep. but to prepare us, right? If you knew a thief was coming, if you knew someone's going to try to kill you and your family, you would probably get prepared. You'd lock your doors. You might even get a gun. You'd have 911 ready. You would be ready to try to advert, to, to stop that threat. And I'm not saying God's a threat, but when you have, when God's saying, I'm going to pour out my wrath on a Christ-rejecting world, well, guess what? I believe the way to spare yourself from that is to give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. Live for God. And I believe because of the first John or first Thessalonians 5, 9, he has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. You want to escape the wrath of God? You want to escape the tribulation? Then receive Christ today. It's as simple as just opening your heart. The Bible says in John 1, 12, to all who receive him, he gives the right to become children of God. All you have to do, I did as a drug dealer. I did it as a drug dealer. I said, I almost committed suicide. I almost blew my brains out. And God spoke to me. And I said, okay, God, I've ruined my life. But if you can do something with it, it's yours. That's how simple of a prayer I prayed. But I surrendered my life. Amen. A lot of people like Jesus as Savior, but they don't want to make him Lord. They don't want to give up the reins. They don't want to give up the control. They don't want to stop sleeping with their girlfriend. They don't want to stop doing drugs. They don't want to stop um, just living for self. But guess what? As I told you, these people said, Craig, are we going through the tribulation? Craig, what about this verse? Because mm. God says in Romans one, that no one will have an excuse. Amen. So they know. And guess what? But did they repent? They knew. I told them just what I'm telling you. And they said, eh, I'll, I'll gamble. But hey, guys, don't gamble your soul. Because there's no, if you miss it, yeah, you can, you might be able to make it through the tribulation. Maybe God will be merciful to you. I don't know. I, I, this is the way I read that verse. This is where a lot of scholars read this verse. But guess what? You're going to go through a living hell. And you're going to not experience just the wrath of the of, of Satan, but the wrath of God. And I encourage you guys, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but to read 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 4, because it talks about the godliness or the godlessness, not the godliness, the godlessness in the last days. And then our duty, which is in um, chapter 4, which is talking about how um, chapter 4 verse for it says, and we'll turn away from listening to the truth and wander into mist and ask for you. So that's for us. As for you, always be sober minded, endure mm -hmm. suffering, right? So there is going to be suffering. There's going to be hard times, but that's not the wrath of God in the tribulation. Wait, wait, can I endure say this? suffering. Can I say this? Way? But I love when people say, oh, you know, we're going to go through it. We're going to go all the way through. Okay. How do you prepare? I did a sermon on this. There's going to yeah. be 100 pound hailstones. Okay, they showed little hailstones the size, well, not little, but the size Soft of baseballs balls. or softballs. They rip through your car, yep. through the root of, roof of a car. They rip through your windshield like it's nothing. They'll rip through a roof of a house. How do you prepare for that? A hundred pound would be like the size yeah. of, probably like a size of one of those big rubber red balls yep. you just play four square with. I mean, it's going to be huge and they're going to blow yeah. up and your the house. Sad thing and is, it's like, how do you prep for that? You, you have to live in a cave. There's so many people prepping instead of prepping their own hearts and like mm -hmm. their purity with God and being sober minded and telling others. And it says, and then also do the work of evangelists, fulfilling your ministry. So there's so many people prepping and getting all this food supplies and all this stuff and other people believing, Oh, then there's other crazy people who believe in God's coming back. So then they're racking up the credit cards and being, but no, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go into all the world and share the good news. And I think that if we just are that, like have that mission mindset, then God will take care of right. us. Whatever happens. I like, but, what, I like what Keith Green said. See this world. I said this the other day, but I'll say it again. See, teach, see this world is like a sinking ship, like a big yep. cruise ship, a sinking ship. It's going down in the middle of the ocean. There's no other boats around. And we are trying to throw out the life preserver of Jesus to all who will take it. That's the way we should see it. This isn't a cruise ship where we're parting anymore. This is a sh We're here to live for Jesus. We're here to tell people about Jesus. We're here to see as many people, to fill heaven as much as possible. And we know some people love sin. Some people love the lies of this world. But we have to believe there is a remnant. There is people that he's called before the foundation of the earth to come to know Christ. And we need to tell those people. We need to share the gospel. We need to pray, as I was saying Sunday, last Sunday, pray for divine appointments. Pray for God to bring people in your path. That should be a natural thing for us. We should say, Lord, I look forward. Bring people in my path who really want Jesus, who are hungry for truth. Bring me those people. And then God will do that. Amen. Because that mm -hmm. we're supposed to be evangelists. We're supposed to go out and tell. We're supposed to go and make disciples of all the earth, teaching them to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey all that I commanded you. That's the great commission. That should be mm -hmm. the why of our life, why we live. 
Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. Thank you so much to our sponsor, Mission Heating and Cooling. And if you are in the Arizona area, please make sure to go to the description below and check out their website. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.